exactly the goal of this community meeting on military equipment use by the Sacramento Police Department. I care about my community. I care about um, over policing in my community and the use of this type of equipment and want to make sure that the voice of people that live in my community is heard. The Community Police Review Commission, made up of 11 citizen volunteers from across the city, leading this effort to gather community input on the military equipment use annual report and annual policy. Critical pieces of transparency and accountability cities across California must produce as required by a state law enacted two years ago. We are really conscious of how we use this equipment and how the, the public is perceived or seize this equipment within their community. Sacramento PD trying to help the public understand what military grade equipment police have and when and how it's used. This equipment is not being used on a day to day basis, but it's on a need by need basis and is highly uh, regulated and uh, tracked on when we do use it. City leaders making sure the public is given a chance to voice its strong feelings on the military equipment use and policies surrounding that use. Folks care about the type of equipment that our police department has access to, how much money they spend on it, what are the rules that govern the use of it, and all of that is stuff that can be discussed as we're finalizing this year's update. Many in this room expressing continued concerns about military equipment use, saying they came to this session to make sure city leaders and police hear them out. Raise our voice for equity, for justice, and for peace, and for accountability. Accountability is absolutely crucial in a democracy when you have such a powerful police force. And the city is on a tight time light to update that policy. They apparently have to turn something in before the city council on August 14th and 15th. And community input is welcome at both meetings. A full report will go before the city council in September. The Sacramento Police Department is, is in need of dispatchers right now to alleviate a major staffing shortage. The department held a big recruitment and open house event yesterday inside the dispatch center on San Joaquin Street. Applicants had a chance to take a tour, answer a mock 911 call, and they were interviewed on the spot. Organizers say dispatchers can earn up to $81,000 a year with full benefits. They say this is not just a job. Dispatchers are calling it a rewarding career for people looking to save lives. What we do matters. What we do every day changes somebody's life or impacts somebody else's. I mean, it's it's a job where you know you're talking to people on their worst day you're able to just provide a little reassurance that you're there that you can help them um, i mean that's something that just fuels your soul and i don't know any other profession that does that it could take three to six months to go through the training to become a dispatcher if you are interested you're urged to go online to apply you can visit the link at the bottom of your screen cityofsacramento.org Turning to our California wildfire coverage, a fire in Riverside County has now grown to over 2,000 acres and has prompted evacuation orders. Cal Fire says the so-called Bonnie Fire sparked on Thursday and is only 5% contained right now. They say it is burning in an extremely rugged area with very steep terrain. More than 1,000 firefighters are currently working to put out this fire from both the ground and the air. At least one person was injured fighting this fire. The Biden administration is charting a new course to increase diversity on college campuses. This after the Supreme Court ruled that they struck down race conscious admissions. KCI 3's Executive Fusco joins us live now. And Jackie, what's next for higher ed? Leticia, the Biden administration has been meeting with stakeholders in higher education about alternative strategies to increase diversity in the absence of affirmative action. Meanwhile, a newly launched investigation asks whether another commonly used admissions practice is discriminatory. A turning point in higher education. After the Supreme Court ruled race conscious college admissions are unconstitutional. We're faced with a decision that threatens to take us backwards. We caught up with Education Secretary Miguel Cardona at a summit of higher education leaders. The Biden administration is seeking feedback as they craft new guidance for schools with the goal of promoting diverse campuses without affirmative action. What we don't want to do is um, overreact to this in a way that goes beyond what the Supreme Court said. They took away one tool. 
Writing for the court's majority, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote students must be treated based on their experiences as an individual, not on the basis of race. But schools are still allowed to consider an applicant's discussion of how race affected their life. The White House is encouraging schools to use an adversity standard during the application process. We want to make sure that we're also acknowledging students who have had to overcome more obstacles to get to where they are. Meanwhile, the Department of Education is investigating claims that Harvard University's legacy admissions policy discriminates by favoring mostly white students with family ties to alumni. We ask that the department will try to ban the widespread practice in the future. There will come a time after this where we make decisions on what we want to do and what we want to support, what regulations we want to have. Today, there's affirmation that we need to do better, and legacy admissions, among other things, are going to be reviewed. A Harvard spokesperson says the university is currently reviewing their admissions practices and redoubling efforts to encourage diverse applicants. Leticia. And Jackie, some schools are getting rid of legacy admissions voluntarily. Yeah, that's right. And actually, the latest example of that came just earlier this month when Wesleyan University in Connecticut announced they were scrapping their legacy admissions policy, joining other places like Johns Hopkins, Carnegie Mellon and Amherst College. But meanwhile, the NAACP is really cranking up the pressure, urging more than 1500 other colleges and universities across the country to do the same. Leticia. Thanks, Jackie. The Education Department will publish a report of best practices for college admissions by September, according to Secretary Cardona. A traffic alert to tell you about this morning. If you live or work in the Folsom area, a four month long pipeline construction project that's starting today. One mile stretch of Folsom Boulevard from Blue Ravine Road to Bidwell Street will have phased lane closures. The first phase starts tonight at seven and will last each night through 5 p.m. the next morning. The city says this pipeline project is needed to maintain the water and wastewater system to avoid delays as well. Try to find an alternate route. Up next, a new proposal to improve school safety. The upcoming event some believe could be a big game changer and make classrooms safer. Wrapping up the state fair, the final day is here. What you need to know if you plan to enjoy all the food, fun and activities at Cal Expo before everything is gone until next year. Let's take a live look outside. We're looking at beautiful Rancho Cordova. We'll be right back with more news and your forecast.
A Black Lives Matter group in Circleville, Ohio, is pushing for answers after a canine officer was released on a man with his hands up in the air. They held a protest Saturday outside of the police department. Body camera footage of the July 4th traffic stop has caused outrage among communities throughout the entire country. The unarmed man who was attacked says he feared for his life during this incident. The Ohio State Patrol says Jadarius Rose was driving a commercial semi truck when he failed to stop. Rose says he first called his mother and then called 911 to ask what he should do. Rose says he followed the 911 operator's instructions and pulled over and proceeded to exit his truck with his hands in the air. Previously released body cam video shows a state trooper urging the officer not to release the dog. I just was hoping that I wouldn't die. Like, I couldn't defend myself. And I just didn't want, I just didn't want the outcome to be bad, like me dying. Officer Ryan Speakman released the canine officer despite multiple troopers on scene telling him not to. The incident has since resulted in the firing of Officer Speakman. Rose has been charged with failure to comply, which is a felony. He has also been fired by the trucking company Western Express. In other news, later this week, members of Congress will take a tour of the Parkland School shooting site where 17 people were killed in 2018. It will happen on Friday before the building is torn down. A Florida representative says the school safety tour and roundtable will give members a chance to see firsthand how a shooting can impact families and an entire community. The classrooms remain exactly as they were when the shooter entered the school five years ago. Some family members will return to walk alongside those lawmakers. The tour comes just days after new federal school safety legislation is introduced. The Alyssa Act will require silent panic alarms in all schools to immediately alert law enforcement of active shooter situations. And the SOS Act will increase investment in more school resource officers. We all need to come together as Republicans and Democrats swiftly move Alyssa's Act and the Strengthening Our Schools Act through the legislative process. Don't sit idly by until the next tragic school shooting. Bill authors and supporters hope the upcoming congressional walkthrough of the school will convince lawmakers to support this legislation. Washington, D.C. is on edge after severe weather tore through the area. Officials are reporting widespread trees and power lines down and service on the metro transit system suspended. In the aftermath of the storm yesterday, EMS prioritized rescue calls involving fallen trees on cars or damaged buildings. A watercraft responded to a vessel taking on water in the Potomac River. The summer heat has not deterred fair lovers from heading to Cal Expo this month. Today is your last chance to enjoy the California State Fair before it all wraps up this year. It's been a big turnout for the 169th State Fair. And while it's the last day, there's still plenty going on today. There is a loaded schedule of events, including Lucha Extreme Wrestling, leading up to a free concert by Trace Atkins. It was amped up from the get-go. Honestly, we've we've put in such an emphasis on our entertainment this year. Historically, the last weekend of the fair tends to be the busiest. If you plan to catch the final day of the fair, there are a few things to keep in mind. Hand stamps for re-entry won't be given after 6.30 p.m. The parking lot closes for entry at 7, so try to come early and there will be no admissions after 8 p.m. That's also when Trace Atkins' concert begins at the Golden One stage. Let's go now to Eileen with more on your fair forecast <laughs> for today. And it's looking fantastic. Uh, yeah, the last weekend of the fair, really the best one in terms of the comfortable level of the heat. The heat is gonna be on this afternoon with temperatures in the mid and upper 90s, but very manageable compared to the other weekends uh, for the state fair. So if you are heading out there over the next couple of hours, the gates open at 10. You can buy the tickets even a little earlier than that. 88 degrees at noon today, low to mid 90s at 2 and 4 p.m. There'll be a nice little breeze coming up at about 5 to 10 miles an hour between 4, 5, and 6 as temperatures are still in the mid 90s at 6 p.m. And then as we get towards the evening time and those temperatures start to come down into the 80s and 70s. Looks really good for the concert tonight. Looking at our month so far, yes, we're in the last couple of days of it, but you can see on the calendar here just how many red days. Those are above average days we have endured. And look at the past two weekends 108, 109. Last weekend, 
weekend was 108, 101, and now we're finally starting to see that trend where temperatures staying in the 90s for at least an extended period. We think today could be as warm as 98 to 100, maybe in a few spots, get close to that 99 or 100 mark, but not well into the 100s like we have been uh, for some of the weekends past. Starting out very comfortable. This is what it looks like in Stockton. We have some high thin clouds around 63 is the temperature here, down even to 59 degrees this morning at Executive Airport. And so even though we're talking mid to upper 90s today, when you start out this nice and cool, got a nice long period in the morning to enjoy those outdoor activities without the heat. 46 is the temperature currently at the south shore of Lake Tahoe. So it will be a warm day ahead. Won't be quite as breezy as yesterday, but still that onshore breeze will be there. The clouds increase, especially going into tomorrow and Tuesday. Do expect a noticeable change to our temperatures, especially come Tuesday. And the reason is we're going to start to see a little bit of this monsoon moisture come and wrap around this high as this high starts to back off some. So the clouds will be in place in the coming days. The high will start to retreat off to the east. So we'll get better onshore breezes Monday and especially into Tuesday. So calling for days of several days in the 80s, likely midweek. By the end of the week, talking Friday and next weekend, we'll likely see that high move back towards us. So prepare for more heat going into maybe next weekend. In the meantime, today we're at 92 and Quincy, about 83 at the south shore of Lake Tahoe, upper 80s in Pollock Pines and Arnold. Again, a little warmer than yesterday. Temperatures in the foothills also up by a degree or two from yesterday, about 93 in Jackson, 95 today in Sonora. At the coast, low clouds early, then a little bit of filtered sunshine around San Francisco, a high of only 66, 83 in Napa Valley, very comfortable. Low 90s likely in the Delta with that onshore breeze 10 to 20 to maybe 25 by late this afternoon. 97 in Modesto and Turlock today, even as warm as 99 in Stockton this afternoon. Mid 90s though in Lodi, Davis also about 95, but 98 in Folsom, maybe even about 99 in Roseville and Rockland this afternoon. 96 tomorrow, so temperatures don't move a whole lot. We're still mid and upper 90s tomorrow, but Tuesday, look at the drop, 87 degrees. More clouds are coming through and temperatures stay in the upper 80s Wednesday and Thursday. Late in the week, mid to upper 90s expected and again, maybe more like the heat heat of uh, this month coming in at the first weekend of August, especially great. Sunday. Great to see the 80s back yeah, in the mix. Yeah, <laughs> the middle of the week looks fantastic. It looks amazing. Yeah. Thank you.